Okay, everybody, today we are going to learn a little bit about how I made this video that uh, quite a few people have asked about. How'd you do that? Uh, my horse, Annie, uh, breathing fire. And um, it uh, it wasn't too hard. There's a couple of things to think about. Uh, there's two programs that I use to do this. The first one is Premiere. It's, uh, it's an Adobe application that does video editing and a little bit of compositing. Compositing is taking uh, footage that is fire, for example, in this example. So we've got fire. If we hide this, you can see it's not there. So compositing is where you take different stuff and place it over top of your video footage. But the first thing that we need to talk about is, well, where do you get footage from? And I took this video with my phone, I happened to be hanging out with the horses and uh, and little baby. It's a nice, Annie cool, came, refreshing morning. Came running around, and she comes up to the top. Oh. And she snorts. <laughs> if you don't have a horse, this is what a horse looks like when they snort. They just hey, you're back. Oh, yeah. They they blow air out their nose. So this is a cool little shot. I thought I would turn it into a short or a reel or TikTok if I had the app. I don't have TikTok. But essentially what it's going to be is a vertical shot. So we can see here on the right hand side, this is a vertical shot. Okay, so let's back it up. We've we've got this horizontal or landscape footage at 1920 by 1080, which is 1K. I kind of wish I'd taken this in 4K, but that's the way it goes. So what we want to do is we want to be able to clip the part that we want and make it into a vertical video format. So with a new sequence, a sequence is just sort of this timeline that allows us to put clips on and do some stuff with, set in vertical format, which is done up here in the sequence settings. You just set it to 1080 by 1920 or whatever size, as long as it's vertical, 9 by 16, hit OK. And when you do this, though, the thing is, so if we just grab, we're going to grab this footage. I'm just going to replicate what I did, or at least part of it. So I'm just going to grab this part here with the I button, go to here, hit the, and we'll go to here, O button. So in and out, we're going to grab this clip here and drag it down into our footage. We're just going to go ahead and hide everything else. So if I do this, whoops, this one's hidden. Okay, if I do this, we can see that our footage does not fit, right? We've got the black on the top and we've got the black on the bottom. And we'll play this out. And um, we'll just go ahead and see if we can mute that. Yep. And this. <laughs> so we can see Annie's a little out of frame, right? So the first thing that we need to do is sort out um, her being in frame. And the way to do that uh, is first to make it big enough. So we're going to set the scale. We're going to set this to 178. I happen to know what that is. So it's 178%. Bam. It fills up the whole frame. Now, if you think she went out of frame earlier before, now she's even further out of frame because she wasn't centered all along. When we make it into vertical, she goes even further off. So right here, actually it could be anywhere you want, we're going to set a position keyframe. We're going to use a toggle animation stopwatch icon. Click that, and it makes this little diamond right in the middle here, which is a keyframe. And we're going to use the horizontal right there. Horizontal change. So we're going to change where this is, where the clip is in relation to the sequence. We'll come over this way. And it's way off, so we want to bring Annie back into center. And we'll go a little further. In fact, we'll just come up here. Uh, we could probably bring her a little more center to there. And that's pretty OK. Let's go back to here where she is center. We're going to just make a keyframe so it holds that. Come back to here, right at the beginning, and just move it over there. So then if we play this through, or just kind of scroll our way through here. We can see Annie stays pretty center there. We come to here, and now she's way off. So we're going to come to about there. Hit a keyframe, because we know she's center there. And over to here, and just 
bring her face over. We want to have a little bit of space in front of her face so we can see the fire come out, right? So we'll just come along and uh, keep that there somewhere. Man, it doesn't have to be precise. You can, you can have a little bit of, of camera movement that sort of happens. And this is all we really need for the first... I mean, we might as well just do it all. Just get get her in in frame, and I'll uh, make this longer for now, and uh, keep her keep her kind of centered. Just and then keep on moving that. And then when you think you've got enough, so here she's not. So we'll just move this over, and that's pretty good. Better. So not bad. No. That's how we change the position. That's how we set up our sequence. That's how we change horizontal to vertical footage for your shorts and, and reels and TikToks. And so we're just going to hide this because this is just what I've been uh, doing now. But the previous shot or the original shot is here. I've also got an adjustment layer on here, which is in a way to add effects, um, primarily color correction. So if we go up into this color correction tab, you can see I've cooled it a bit, put it in a bunch of saturation and uh, brought down the highlights because it's a very bright clip. If I just sort of turn it off, you can see the difference. A little more purpley, a little bit more saturated compared to before it was green and desaturated and uh, looks a little bit better. You can see it especially in a shot like this here where we turn it off like that and you see she's quite green. Doesn't look quite right. So that's what that pink area is. And then the only part that actually matters matters is the part that we want to uh, keep track of. Now there's a couple of ways to put fire onto your horse. One way is just to get some stock footage, which is essentially um, going to be a, a site that has um, just clips of stuff. And you can buy them or sometimes get them for free. I decided to make my own fire. So here's our fire. And this fire comes in from my render program as a bunch of uh, pictures. So this is what it looks like just on black, which is not. It's actually uh, a transparent. So this is what it looks like on transparent. Uh, and then when you place it over top of footage, uh, the actual colors start to show through of what the fire really looks like. Now, the one trick about this, though, um, and I'll show you how it matters. We're just going to duplicate this by holding Alt, dragging upwards. We'll show this one, hide this one, select this one, go into the opacity, and we can see there's this thing called a mask. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And actually, what I can do is I can show you inside of Blender. Blender is my 3D program. Blender is free. Premiere is not, but Blender is. And you can see inside of this, this program here, we've got, this is going to look so confusing to so many of you, I'm sure, if you've never touched a 3D program or Blender at least. But what I've got is, is, uh, the scene tracked. So we can see down in, just look down in here for now. Don't worry about all the fire coming out. You can see down here all these squiggly little lines. Okay, so I've tracked the scene, and if you look up here, you'll see this big rectangular weird thing. That's the camera. So Blender has figured out where I am in 3D space and tracked the scene as it is. Okay, and then we need to track Annie. So we get a few spots on, on Annie to track, and I only need to track a little bit where I want to put the fire. So we track that. And those spots are, let's see, right in here. So these are Annie. And this big square here is our smoke and fire simulation. But that's not important. Also, tracking is not, we're not going to cover tracking right now. But this is to give you an idea of how to kind of go about doing something like this. And just inside of here is where our fire exists. So you can see here we've got, um, right now it's just smoke because it has to render out completely, but this is where all of our, our, our action actually takes place. So there's our fire. Blender's catching up to what I'm up to. And we can see here we've got a problem. So the fire is volatile, <laughs> like all fire. Even when you're making it in 3D, it's volatile business. And so what happens is it's over top of her nose, right? We can see that the fire isn't coming out of her nose, it seems to be just around her nose. And so we don't want that. So once we're done in 3D and we've got fire that kind of looks like fire and we've got our 
it's moving in the way we want it to move in, we'll render that out, meaning that we take this process of creating fire and we render it out as I showed you just a second ago inside of here where we can we can double click this and you can see this is what comes out of the 3D program. Now again, this can be anything. You can get some stock footage, you can you can do whatever. I like the 3D program because I think it's more accurate and a little bit more fun to play with. But we still have, as you can see, fire over top of uh, the horse's nose, which is not what we want. So the last step to this, not including, of course, a little bit of sound effects where we create this uh, this whoosh, right? So it's a fire whoosh, which adds on to Annie's snort. So, you know, there's that. Um, but what we need to do, last but not least, is just find any spot that we can start with where we can see that there's fire over top. And we're gonna go down into the opacity here, right? And we grab this pen tool, and it's going to allow us to draw on any, any of the horse. Annie's a real cool horse, actually. She uh, She's a wildie, she's kind of like a Mustang, if you're familiar with that. Now, as you can see, what's happened is, is it's masked off uh, the footage. So I put the mask on the wrong uh, <laughs> on the wrong footage. So we're just going to delete that. And we need to select the footage we want to mask. Okay, so now there's no mask on here. Let's go to here. This in again. And it's just it's just drawing. You know, you're just kind of making a bunch of lines. You can make them super precise, but because this is going to be shown on a phone, you know, it can be kind of precise. Okay, so we're going to just increase the feather to about 15 pixels. And that's just down here in the mass settings. But now we've gotten rid of the fire, and <laughs> we've got the fire on her nose only. So the thing to do is just hit the inverted checkbox, and bam! You've got fire not on her nose, coming out of her nose and sort of blowing upwards, because fire sort of does that. And now what we're going to do is set a keyframe, just like we did for the positioning of the clip itself, and that'll create this little diamond. And we're just going to move our way around, select the mask, move our way around, and just see where that mask sits. So we move it over there, and you see it automatically creates that keyframe. Whoops. And that can go back there, and then we'll come back to here and move it around a little bit more, like that. And a little bit more. Like that, and just double check, just kind of come along and just see how it looks. Move it a little bit like that, and and I'm just using the arrow keys to uh, move around the timeline here. Back down to our mask, select it. Oop, it's a little too high, so bring it down, and we're just going to go along and make this mask fit the situation, like that. Come on here. Just because we don't want it over top of her nose or on her mouth, if we can help it, which we can, and this is how we do it. And that's it. I'll just move that into place there. And so that should, that should do it. And if you want to see it, just uh, click anywhere else other than on this mask. Right, right here, if we clicked it, it shows the blue outline. But if we click anywhere else, it just turns off so we can hide that. And we can just take a look and see, well, how does that look? Right, that's not bad. There's a, just a frame there where I can see the fire over top of her nose. So I'm just going to select this mask here and just move this to there. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This happens so fast that you'd barely know. But you just kind of want to get it sort of okay. Add in a little sound design and you're good to go and that sort of concludes how to go about making this silly little uh, short 30 seconds long where my horse runs around and uh, and then breathes some fire out and then comes over for a, for a pat. So hopefully that's been interesting. If you have any questions or thoughts, of course, let me know anytime. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.